slow. All right, I don't know if anybody can hear me. Um, I am doing my best to figure this out. I have never used this program before, and I'm trying my absolute best to make this be as good as it can be. Hopefully it looks okay. Hopefully it sounds okay. Um, I clearly don't know what I'm doing. I'm very out of my element. And also, I just have to say that I don't know how people do this because I am so fucking nervous and I don't know if it's just because of the fact that um, I guess with pre-recorded stuff, I feel like I can control what I'm saying and can edit things so that I can kind of get the point across. Whereas live, I don't have that luxury and I'm kind of just stuck with whatever I say and anything I say goes and whatever um, you guys hear is what comes out. So here we are. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. Um, and this chat is going crazy. Um, I'm not sure. It sounds like, it sounds like, or it looks like people are not able to see me. Um, I hold on one second. God, this is, see, this is why I'm nervous because I have no, wait, uh, okay. I had to press the transition button. Okay. Now we're live. Can you see me now? Because it looks like I can see myself. Okay, it looks like we're good. I think we're okay now. Um, hi, everyone. Jesus Christ, I can't see anything that's going on in this chat because it's moving so fast. Um, how is everybody doing? Um, <laughs> this is so weird. I can't express to you guys enough how strange this is to like... Again, when I do YouTube videos, it's a lot of just me talking to myself and being like, okay, I think that sounded okay. And I can kind of give myself feedback. Um, but having this live element is so bizarre. And, uh, and I feel like I should be talking to you guys and getting some sort of response. And it's just, I, I don't know. It's weird. It's very, very different of a, of an experience for me. Um, but I'm good. I am very good. Thank you guys for asking. Okay. Um, I, I didn't know how this was going to go. I didn't know how, 
how it looks like my mic is clipping a little bit. Um, I didn't know how this was going to go at all, so I didn't plan anything. Um, I labeled it as a Q&A just because I was like, I don't know if I'm just not going to have anything to talk to. I don't, or talk, I'm not going to have anything to talk about. Um, I, I don't know what people want me to talk about. So I, I labeled it as a Q&A to, as a Q&A to hopefully kind of gear conversation in some shape or form. And, um, yeah, so that, that way I'm not one that way I can not just kind of ramble off into Neverland and then we can kind of stay on track and get to some of your guys's conversations and, uh, and yeah, so I am looking at this chat right now and here's the thing. Okay. So I just saw somebody say, pretend that you're pretend it's like you're on stage. The difference is that on stage, there's five of us and it's much less, I, I feel like I can just n kind of pretend like people's eyes aren't on me and they're on Chris because he's the singer. And so then it just doesn't feel like I, I have to be nervous or anything. Whereas this this is my channel. Everybody's here watching me talk. So I feel much more, I don't know. It feels much more intimate and much more, um, I don't know, I guess just zoned in on, on me. So, uh, yeah. And I don't have to talk on stage either. As somebody said, um, have I ever, somebody asked if I had ever, ever thought of starting a podcast and I used to have a podcast a while back and I stopped doing it because it was taking up so much of my time that I was just like, you know what? I can't keep up with this. Um, I think a, a big part of it was the, the fact that um, I, I felt like I would think of people to, that I, that would want to, to have on it and the people I would reach out to them, find somebody. And then by the time that I, uh, by the time that I found somebody recorded it, then I would have to edit it, make it all sound great. And, uh, and then by the time that that was all done, it was like, I had to think of somebody else and do the whole process over again. And it was like full-time job, especially just doing it all myself. And I, I feel like if I had some buddy working behind the scenes, like helping me edit and put it all together, where it was some, some way that I was just able to show up and not really have to worry about it at all, um, then I, I think that it would be a little bit more uh, digestible and something that would be much more easy to I keep keep up with, I guess. Um, but... I just have so many other things that I, that I would rather do. And it feels less like, um, I guess just less important to me to do that than it does to do some of the other outlets that I have. And I, I always, everybody always says that I, I'm, or everybody gives me shit all the time because they say that I, uh, because I always say that I have shit to do. And the truth is, is, I always have shit to do. There's always stuff that I like to work on. There's always stuff that I am trying to work towards. And um, unfortunately, for right now, podcasting just it does not fit into that. Um, maybe later, maybe down the road. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so that's that's that. Uh, I, and I, I I totally just skimmed over the fact that everybody's here. And I just want to say thank you all for tuning in. I didn't say that at the beginning, um, but thank you guys all for being here and watching and um, taking time out of your day to, to do this because this is really interesting for me on this side of it. And uh, hopefully it's cool for you guys on this side or on, on your side. See, this is why live, I feel like just isn't, it's it doesn't suit me because I, I want to be able to like edit all of my, all of my stuff and, and make me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, 
and here I can't do that. So you guys get the full unfiltered version of what I'm saying, which could be a good or a bad thing. Um, so with that being said, what do you guys want me to talk about? What oh, I know that this is, um, I, this was kind of last minute. I decided to do this instead of doing a video for this week, just because I was like, you know what? I feel like doing something different. And the last time that we did something like this was the quarantine Q and a, and I feel like doing something like this and revisiting that is, uh, is something that could be cool for you guys. And for me, um, so I'm sorry. I'm trying to read some of these questions as they're as they're flying by. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What do we have here? Uh, Jesus Christ! Thank you guys so much for your donations. Um, <laughs> Justice for time bomb. Hell yeah. I don't know what that means, but uh, yeah, hell yeah. You have my heart logo tattooed on your hand. Jesus Christ. Um, I I've actually seen a couple people with my, my uh, heart logo that I'm now coining it as. Um, had a, I've seen a few people that, has ha that have had that. Um, tattooed and that's crazy um i thank you that's that's very very awesome to see it's a little strange because it's like i don't know i i, I feel like it, it's it reminds me of something that like when a when you get a band tattoo or when somebody says i got your band's logo tattooed on me or lyrics it's always so hard to know what to say to that like what is the proper response because I know that it means a lot to whoever is wh whoever has it on on them because they got it for a reason, um, but I think I think that it's it's more just like holy shit I I don't know what to say because that that just feels like such a uh, uh, I don't know it's such such an honor to have uh, to I don't know <laughs> I don't know I, I'm like speechless talking about it because it it just when people show us those types of things it's always like like wow there's people that actually care that much that care about what we're doing and what we're trying to do and and care about us as people and as artists and want to support us that they're willing to put something on them that's with them for the rest of their lives and that's that's really really cool so thank you for anybody that's ever gotten a tattoo of my logo or the band's logo or anything like that thank you so much um, yeah. Wow. Uh, I, I feel like, I don't know, speechless, which is a bad thing to be on a, a, a live stream. Uh, so back to questions here. Where did the heart logo come from? Uh, so I did not draw it. I wish that I was talented enough to have drawn that. My tattoo artist named Tyler, one of my tattoo artists named Tyler, uh, works up at Black Casket Tattoo in Dixon City. And he drew, I just told him that I wanted some sort of heart thing. Um, I, I actually gave him, I wish that I had a physical copy of it to show you guys, but um, on the on the the Love Metal album cover, from him, how it has the the heartogram in the middle, and then behind it, it's this kind of black mat. I don't know, a filigree gothic looking design, and I literally just sent him that and said, "I want a heart, but in this some type of I don't know this this type of style," um, and he ended up drawing that and coming up with the heart and I just kind of took it and I was like it's tattooed on me so it might as well just be my logo I guess 
Um, and so that is what I have here tattooed on my neck. And it was a fun time. And I, it's so funny because I, uh, I, I talk to people or run into people all the time that are like, did that hurt? And it's like, yeah, of course it hurt. It was on, it's on my neck, first of all. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of the most painful tattoos I've ever gotten. And especially Tyler tends to be a little bit heavy handed when he tattoos. So it feels like getting a tattoo, but also having somebody choke you out at the same time, which could be a good thing depending on who you're talking to. Um, I don't know if I should go down that road, but, um, Anyway, yeah, that's where my logo came from, and uh, and yeah, so then I've just been kind of branding everything with it because I, I I'm stoked on the logo, and I am yeah thrilled with it, and I'm glad that you guys all think it's cool too. How long did it take to finish? Um, I so I went in and got tattooed trying to think of how many sessions it was. I think it was, I got the whole thing outlined from here to here. And that was enough for one day. I, I want to say it was like three hours, maybe four hours of outlining. And then I went back, had one rose shaded. And that was a few hours. Went back, had the other rose shaded. And then went back in and had like all the black work done and the heart kind of shaded a little bit. And the, the black in here was mostly done by a liner. So thank you, Tyler. So cool of you to do that to me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, ba ba so excited to see you all at Blue Ridge for the second year in a row. Any word on if you are playing on the same day as Villa Vallo? Um, are we talking about the Blue Ridge? We're not talking about Blue Ridge Rock Fest, are we? Because that's, I, I don't know if he's on that. I also haven't really kept up to date with anything that he's been doing. So I, I, I don't know, maybe. Can you give us your updated review using the quad core live? What did Ryan think of it? <laughs> what does Justin, uh, what does justice for time bomb mean? I I want, so you guys answer that for me and I will answer my question about the quad cortex. So the quad cortex uh, was a little rough using it the first night only because I had a couple issues um, with, I didn't realize that I needed to, flip on the ground switch and if anybody has ever used like an amp or anything knows that if you don't have that turned on if you have really shitty power it can cause a lot of feedback and a lot of buzzing and just noise and I didn't have that on and apparently the power was really shitty because the next day when I went to you know test it out and see how it all worked and and just try to like dial everything in to figure out what was causing it. And at one point I had like three noise suppressors on and I was like, this is not right. There's no reason why I should have this much gate on a guitar. That's just ridiculous. There's no reason. Uh, and so I was looking through the settings and the output and the input settings. And then I saw the gate switch and I was just like, cool. I could have just turn that on and it would have been clean as a whistle the whole time. That's sick. So aside from that, it's been amazing. I haven't had any issues. Uh, our front of house guy, Logan said that it sounded amazing out front. And since then, Justin has been a, con a, a convert, a convert convert. Um, and Ryan has also been playing around heavily with his lately as well. So I think that we're going to eventually switch over fully to the quad cortex. So 
that's pretty exciting. Um, let's see how many, what other question. Oh wait, we never talked about justice for time bomb. What is what is justice for time bomb? I need to know. Um, I'm trying to skim through these questions because they're seriously going so fast. I saw somebody ask a question about... Vinny doesn't like it. So Vinny doesn't like Time Bomb. Um, I am going to counter that and say that it's not that he doesn't like Time Bomb. It's just that whenever we've played it in the past, it seems like nobody gives a shit in the crowd. And when I say that, it's a lot of just people looking like they have no idea where they are, what they're listening to, what they're watching. They don't know if they walked into a show. They don't know if they're waiting for the bus. They don't know what is going on. And I think that's where that that mentality of like people don't want to hear it comes from because that's a lot of how we gauge set list stuff is crowd reaction because a big part of playing shows is how you guys react to the songs. We want you guys to enjoy them and be into them. And I know that there's always going to be a, a small group of people that want to hear a specific amount of uh, or a, a specific set of songs i guess you know older songs songs that we don't play very often um and it's hard to play those just because the reception is like that like what i said it's a lot of just standing around and people just being like what the fuck is this i've never heard this song i don't know what they're playing i don't even know who this band is anymore so that's why a lot of those songs tend to not make it into the set list because we want as many people to enjoy what we're playing as possible. And so on the other side of that, it feels really special when we do play them because we don't play them as much. So it's kind of like this, uh, it, this balancing act of kind of just like, well, we haven't played this song in like three years. We should probably play it for the next couple of shows and see how it goes. And then, you know, it doesn't go over well. And we're just like, yeah, we're just going to stick to what, what everybody likes anyway oh boy um jesus there's 900 people in here this is crazy you guys are nuts um okay so somebody said we came to Mexico. They were looking forward to meeting us. Why didn't we do a meet and greet? Uh, okay, so that's a good question. A lot of times when we do shows like that that don't have meet and greets, it's because we're not the headliners. You know, if, if I mean, we were down there with Bring Me the Horizon and it would have felt super weird for us to be like, hey, we're not the main band on this, but we're going to do a, a meet and greet anyway. Um, so I, I think a lot of it is just that, you know, if we, if we do headliners in other countries down the road, I mean, we've done them in, uh, I mean, Jesus, I'm getting ahead of myself. My brain just is flying right now. So we have done meet and greets in most European countries, I think at this point over the years trying to think of I, I don't think that we've done them in like south america or mexico or uh, yeah i'm trying to remember it it's so hard to remember where we do them because they happen so often anymore um so but anyway that to answer that question that's why we uh you know if we're not playing as the headlining act that's why we don't do a, a meet and greet Have we ever played in Brazil? Is this a trick question? Because yes, we have many times. Um, we I think we've been to South America three times in the last 10 years, which doesn't sound like a lot. But if you think about every, 
Actually, I think maybe it's been more like the last seven or eight years. But man, the pandemic really put a... Yeah, pandemic really messed up touring because we missed out. Like, I think, it, yeah, Disguise, like half of our album cycle was just cut short of touring. Just because we we couldn't tour. Um, and so I, I think had that have not been the case, we'd have come to, you know, South America and done a full, full actual tour, a full actual you know, world tour that we typically do when we tour for, for, for an album. And yeah, so that, that's why it's been so long since we've been back. Um, Toronto was canceled. Please come back. We will, we will. Uh, yeah, that was a super unfortunate situation just because that was out of everybody's control. And uh, I mean, the, the borders were closed. Like we couldn't even get through if we wanted to. So it, it was a, a tough situation, but we'll be back and it will be great. It'll be a great show. Uh, boy. My mom said you look like a doctor. I don't know what that means, but I'll, I'll take it, I guess. Uh, how did you give up smoking? I've been diagnosed with heart disease, but I'm really struggling to quit. Much love. Damn. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, that's, that's really tough. I, so I, God, that's, that was a heavy question case. I'm sorry. So to answer that, I, for people that don't know, I smoked for six years, I think, six, seven years. And I actually quit. I transferred over to vaping for a really short time, just with little pen vapes. Um, and I was having other health issues outside of quitting smoking that I thought were related to trying to quit smoking. And that scared me enough to be like, I just have to quit cold turkey because otherwise I'm going to fucking die. And so that's really the reason that I that I was able to quit is because I was so afraid of be, becoming deathly ill from continuing to smoke that I it scared me into just being like, I have to just suffer and get through this and, you know, get uh, get all of this out of my system and and not be a smoker. And, you know, it, it sucks because I do look back on as bad as this sounds. I, I do look back on pictures of myself and I'm like, damn, I looked cool as shit smoking cigs. Um, but I don't miss smelling like shit all the time. I don't miss, um, the taste of it. I don't miss anything else. I think I just have this romanticized version of myself in my head from when I used to smoke and yeah, so my suggestion would be to switch to vaping that, I mean, I know a lot of people that have had success quitting smoking, switching that way. And even if it takes you much longer to quit after switching, that's still better, I think, than continuing to smoke cigarettes because everybody knows how bad they are for you and yeah, so I would say to try to switch. I know that everybody around me has been smoking those um those elf bars and those seem to be pretty popular. I don't know if you're a big fan of uh I, like I, I don't want to I don't want this to come across like people tuning in late like I'm promoting smoking because I'm not. Um I if if you're going to switch, switch or if you're going to smoke i guess vaping is probably the better of the two options um i'm sure that more people have uh better experience with me or better experience than me with switching because like i said i i only vaped for like a week or two and i was just like i can't i can't do this at all i'm having 
too many other issues. And uh, yeah, so I would switch if I were you, or try to anyway. Maybe wean yourself off, smoke cigs a couple times, vape the rest of the time. I don't know. That's that's as best of an answer I uh, have for you. Somebody says weed with an asterisk. That could work too, I guess. <laughs> Damn, favorite beer. I actually don't drink beer. I do not like the taste of beer at all. I am much more of a wine guy myself. I like whiskey as well, but I tend to not drink whiskey because of my stomach and, uh, you know, just it's a little painful. So I tend to tend to not drink. I haven't drank in a few months and I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm, I, I feel like this is actually a good segue into a topic that I have never really talked about, but I feel like it's something interesting to touch on. I, so last year specifically, I started drinking wine a lot, which I love wine. And I, started drinking it a lot before we would play and I started getting used to the feeling of just before we would play, I'd have to have a pre-show drink and I'd go out, I'd be a little bit buzzed and it would make the show great. And I started to feel like over time, my pre-show drink became pre-show drinks and I felt like I was starting to play a little bit more sloppy and be a little bit more than buzzed playing and I was like, this is dumb. There, I, I, like, I, there's no reason for me to, I don't know. It's like, I, there's no reason for me to try to, I don't know, soften the effect of playing live because it's such an adrenaline rush of an experience in itself that why would I want to ruin that? And then also I just want to play the guitar well and be able to sing and stuff. And I've had a handful of instances where it was a little too much and I was like, this needs to not happen. So um, I have been trying to not drink, um, you know, occasionally here and there I'll have a glass of wine every once in a while. But um, as far as before shows, I've been purposely trying to not just because of that. I don't want to, I don't want to get into the habit of having that be a thing because it's just not necessary. <clears throat> Come to Romania. I'd pay millions to see you guys. Well, thank you, Bianca. Um, <laughs> I'd love to come to Romania. Unfortunately, we just haven't uh, been booked there yet. I feel like, so I was trying to figure out background noise for this because I was like, I don't know if this is going to be weird if, if people are just watching and there's no background music because, you know, when people stream and stuff, they have background noise and, um, they have songs that are real low in the background. But I almost like this sort of like conversational Thing. It feels kind of like I'm doing, feels kind of like I am doing a podcast in a way. And it's, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how this sounds. So I, I'm hoping that it sounds okay enough. Uh, but I, I'm always super like audio quality has to be on point. So I, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you have ADHD? Yes. Yes, I think I do. What about streaming games? I actually, I don't play video games enough to warrant that. Um, I Somebody asked me on Twitter before this if I ever thought about just making a Twitch. Truth is, one, I don't anticipate doing live stuff often. And also, I just don't feel like I play enough games. Like I have so much other shit that I'm working on 
that I just don't have time to play video games. And I know that that sounds like such a stupid excuse, but I honestly would rather be working on the stuff that I'm working on than playing video games. And I don't know if that's just like a drive thing that I have where I'm just like, I have to be doing something all the time. I have to be accomplishing whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, but I, I'm finding more and more often than not that I have a tendency to overexert myself when working on stuff. And not that I burn myself out because thankfully I have multiple things different outlets that I like to pursue. But uh, so in that regard, I am able to like switch between things as I see fit. And if I, if I start feeling like I'm kind of overdoing it in one area, I can pull back and focus on something else instead. And I think that's part of why I love having all of the creative outlets that I do, because then I'm just constantly working on shit that I like to do and I never get bored and I never get burned out. And, uh, and yeah, so I don't even remember what the original question was. Jesus, um, my average Virgo, you know, I'm not one that's super, uh, super invested in like horoscopes or people being personality types of, you know, whatever their horoscope is, but everything that I have read about Virgos, I am like to a T. So I don't know what that means for that specifically, but yeah. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I am a Virgo for sure. Update on my ghost friend. Okay. So. ghost friend i okay so a couple days ago i actually was like man i haven't really experienced anything recently and then the last specifically i think yesterday i heard some weird shit um i actually 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 jesus i've completely forgot about this so i went outside the other night took the dog out and usually i bring a flashlight outside with me because there's deer and stuff that are out and i don't want you know i one i don't want to be snuck up on by a deer and two not that that would happen because deers do not want to be around anybody but um i don't want to be scared and i don't want the dog to run off after um after you know, the deer, I don't want them just going off into the wilderness. And so I typically will shine a flashlight out and I kind of look around just to make sure. And in the brush, I see the, the set of eyes and I'm like, okay, that's fucking terrifying because it's pitch black. And then there's just eyes back there. And granted, it was probably a cat. There's cats that run, you know, all over the place back here. And there used to be a cat that would come in my backyard and shit all the time. And it would make me so mad because I'd be out there and then the dog would eat the cat shit. And I'd be like, dude, somebody get your fucking cat in order here because this does not need to be in my yard. And uh, yeah, typical, typical uh, middle-aged man problems. So anyway, I'm, I'm seeing these eyes and I pull my flashlight away and turn around. And then when I go back, they're further away, but they're still looking at me. So I'm pretty sure it's a cat. And I, so I come inside and the second I come inside, I start hearing it seriously sounded, sounded like somebody was right outside of the wall humming. And I'm like looking around and the dog isn't reacting. And so I'm like, am I just hearing shit or what is going on here? And, and then after a while, it just kind of faded away and, and disappeared. So 
I don't know what to make of that, but I think also because I've been preoccupied, so I haven't really been paying attention as much. And so maybe that's why I haven't really experienced or heard anything. But the whole reason that that is significant to me is because I got tattooed earlier in that day. And I was talking to my tattoo artist who is finishing my arm and she was talking about skinwalkers. And so immediately when I started hearing the hummer, the humming, I was like, Oh God, she brought this into my life. Didn't she? And so, yeah, so that, that was my, uh, my spooky experience for the last couple of days. And then I actually, yesterday I heard, I heard something really loud and I, it sounded like something fell in the other room and the dog heard it and I, you know, there was nothing there. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I've, I've been kind of just ignoring it and hoping that it just goes away or that it just kind of does its thing and kind of goes off and leaves me be. And I find that I haven't really experienced too much outside of those two instances. So that's the update. Um, okay, so I have here, um, somebody says, I just turned 18 today and I was wondering how do you cope when you have personal issues going on yet still have to work on music. So, so this is tough because I think it really depends on what you are, it depends on the person and the circumstance. I am one of those people, so when it comes to working on stuff, I find that I am much more, if I'm going through something, I have a tendency, especially with writing, like writing stories, I have a tendency to put a lot of that into what I'm working on story-wise. I don't typically get that too much when I'm working on music, but I know that a lot of people that do write music use that as a creative outlet. So I think, I think from a music standpoint, it's a lot of just trying to, I, I don't know, it's, it's a tough thing to say or give advice on because when I was younger and I would go through stuff, my default thing to go to was to music and I would play guitar and I would play songs that made me feel the way that I was feeling or played songs that felt like a, a physical manifestation of the stuff that I was going through. And I think that that's why bands like him and AFI who, you know, a lot of their earlier stuff was about heartbreak and about heartache and grief and loss. And I feel like that's why those bands in particular were really influential to me because I would have stuff happen in my life. And it was like those two bands were the bands that really just kind of like spoke to me on that personal level. And so I think when it comes to writing stuff, if you're going going through something, I think that a lot of it is just trying to translate, you know, how how you feel into music. I don't know if anybody's familiar with, or if you in particular are familiar with music theory. I'm not, but I'm going to talk out my ass like I am. I think that, you know, when you're, when you're going through something sad, you're going to work in a minor key. <laughs> and when you're happy, you're going to work in something that's a little bit more uplifting and a major key. And that's about my extent of uh, music theory. So this was music theory 101 with me. Um, no, I, I think that it's all about just finding, finding the feeling. This is like trying to explain how I don't even have, have a good analogy for this, but this it's so much just like 
just a feeling type of thing. You know, when I was working on, on music and I was sad or going through something that was really hard, it was a lot of just trying to translate how I felt into music and playing chords and leads that, that felt like they, you know, they hit on, on that, that same level. And it was kind of like this, this, I don't know, this cathartic moment of just, I'm translating all this pain and sadness into this music. And I think that's, what's so special about creating in general is it's just, you can use it as an outlet to let go of those things. I know that I touched on earlier when I'm working on stories and stuff, that's typically where I will put a lot of my, my grief and a lot of the stuff that I go through. Um, just because it's so, I, I find that it's so much more personal than music. I guess that's subjective to whoever's working on it, but I find that I can take a character and say I'm going through X, Y, Z thing. I can take what I'm going through, push that onto that character, and then they have to deal deal with it. And then I go through the story of how this person uh, deals with that grief and that that sadness and it sort of externalizes what I'm feeling and it makes you process it in a different way. And I think it's a lot easier to kind of accept and, you know, move forward from that and kind of let it go. If it's, you know, you put it on somebody else and you say, this is this character's problem and not mine. And this is how I've chosen to have them deal with it. And it's sort of like this weird way of, of acceptance and, um, and, and letting go. And so that's where I think that a lot of what I enjoy about writing comes from is being able to take the aspects of myself that I either have issues with or things that I'm, that I'm going through or things that I'm dealing with in my personal life or things that I've just seen that pissed me off. It's so much easier to just be like this character has to deal with it now it's not my problem and um and and let it go in that way and so that's why writing is so special to me and that's why i continue to do it and uh and yeah so long-winded answer for that very simple question hope that that helps back to the uh questions okay so somebody says Gabby, not Gabby. I should probably announce you by people and not just somebody says this. Uh, so Gabby, not Gabby says, would you ever consider publishing another book? Um, and yes, I actually have been working very diligently over the last, I don't know, week or so um, on starting to kind of put down a novel on paper. And I, I've had an idea of what I wanted to do from kind of point A to point B, you know, roughly. I came up with this idea last year and it just sort of sat in my, in my notes on my computer. And I came across it while looking for I want to say that it was for like, I was looking for tax documents or something on my computer. And I, I stumbled upon this outline and I was like, whoa. And even just reading the outline, it really kind of touched me. And I was like, I should work on this. Like, this is actually like something really great that I should pursue. And so I kind of sat on it and, you know, I had a bunch of other stuff that I was doing at the time. And, um, and then, so now just recently within the last week or so, I've been really, really heavily diving in and kind of fleshing the characters out and fleshing the story out. And, and, um, and yeah, so yes, I, I'm hoping that I'm able to keep up the pace that I'm working on now. And, hopefully have a first draft done within the next few months. Um, I don't know what that means long-term wise as far as when anything else will get done. But, uh, but yes, I am working on a, 
novel. So that being said, I also have to bring this up. I know a lot of people have have uh, brought up whether or not I'm ever going to republish my short storybook. And so the short answer, I'm trying to think of how to word this properly. The short answer is yes, but limited. Um, and to go off of that, I also have something here. Just got, I actually just got this yesterday. And this is a reprinted version of this book that is a little bit smaller, pocket size, um, and it has an extra story that was not included in the original. And this is just a proof version of this, but uh, yeah. So this will be coming out hopefully within, I wanna say I will have them by April. And yeah, so that will be coming soon. Very exciting. I, I guess <laughs> I uh, the excitement for that book has gone away from me because it's it's been so long since the original publishing of it that I just kind of it, it's kind of just like oh okay here it is um, but I think that, that it's exciting to have an extra story added and uh, hopefully that's something that you guys are interested in like I said it's only going to be limited quantities but um, for now. We'll see how it goes in uh, in April. So, yeah, man, I I can't believe how many people are still here. I have to again just say thank you guys for spending your time with me and listening to me just kind of ramble because that's that's really what this is is just me rambling on about uh, about nonsense. <laughs> Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. what did MIW consider releasing an official instrumental version of scoring the end of the world for us that are more interested in the music and instrumental aspect Steven um, are you talking about like a full album because if it's a full album probably not but um, I know that we have been releasing the songs instrumentally and acapella on YouTube. So I imagine eventually all the songs will make it there over time. So yeah, at some point, I know that's not a, that's not an album, but, um, and I know that that's not something that you can just put on Spotify and listen to, but uh, I guess that's just better than, than nothing. Will you ever do any more MIW remixes like you did with Underdog, Lucid Duncan? So, uh, the short answer to that is uh, probably not just because of just because I've been out of the remix world for such a long time, not that there was a world for me to be in. Um, but at that time I was really, really heavily listening to like a bunch of electronic and trance music. And, um, and I, I, I just don't feel like I have that same sort of inspiration or influence that I once did. And also, like I said before, I'm just, I have so much other stuff so many other things that I'm working on that I would rather be doing than doing than doing a remix that uh, I just will probably not. Maybe sometime, I don't know. Um, yeah. Now, now you got my, my brain thinking. Um, NPRC Music says... Why do we rarely get to see Chris in your tour vlogs? It's pretty unusual considering you record basically everyone. Does he get upset by it or is he just super busy? Um, the answer to that, Julie asked the same question. Chris is never in, in the vlogs. 
So the answer to that is that I know that I've said this in the past. I like to be super respectful of people's um, personal space. And I, I, I don't ever want to do something that I feel like is going to uh, upset anyone. So I feel like the way that I've always handled at least like, I, I just never know, like most of the time people, Jesus Christ, I don't know why this is so hard for me to talk about. Um, most of the time I can tell when people are in the mood to be filmed with Chris, it's a little bit harder to tell because I never know if he's in like a playful mood or if he's like preoccupied mentally with other things. And I never want to kind of push that. I, I don't know. I, I don't ever want to make him or put him in a position where he feels like he has to be uncomfortable and on the spot when he's not mentally prepared to do that. So I've kind of just left it at like, he'll, he, he'll make it aware when he wants to be filmed or when he's ready to be filmed. And that has been the case, um, over the last, the last while. And on the cruise specifically, I didn't see him like at all outside of playing. So that's why he wasn't in, in the, the, the cruise vlog, but, uh, but yeah, so it's just a matter of one, if he's not there when we're all kind of doing stuff, obviously he doesn't get filmed. And a lot of times he's just kind of off doing his own thing and hanging out with his, his friends outside of the band. And, um, and yeah, so a lot of times it's, it's just, he doesn't, doesn't uh, end up making it in the videos it's not not anything personal it's not like he's like fuck this i don't want to be a part of this um it's just he's just typically busy and doing other things oh boy hmm Joshua Zare says, any tips for writing songs on guitar? Josh, I wish that I had a magic recipe to give you, but a lot of a lot of anything creative is just showing up and doing the work, whether you feel like it or not. And that sucks for someone like me who lives and breathes by inspiration. If I'm not inspired by something, I have a really, really hard time doing it. And that goes for music, that goes for writing, that goes for video stuff, that goes for anything that I'm doing. If I am not feeling it, it is so, so hard for me to continue to do it or to show up and do it. And so I know that this isn't exactly what your question was, because you just wanted some tips <laughs> and now I'm making it this existential problem that I have. Uh, but no, I think as far as writing music goes, I think that it's something that you just kind of get used to, you know, over, over time of doing it, you just kind of get a feel for what works and what doesn't. I'm not somebody that's trained classically in uh, like music theory, like I said earlier. so. I do not have that to rely on. And a lot of what I do have to rely on is just what I hear and what I feel. And over time, you just kind of get used to what, what works with what. And, um, you know, when you play stuff, like, I, I don't know how to, how to better put this, but say you're playing chords and you want to come up with a lead over it. A lot of times when you're messing around, you can hear the notes that don't work. You know, they're sour, they just sound bad. And over time, you just learn what notes work with what chord progressions, especially if you're playing in a lot of the same chord, chord progressions like we do, it's a lot easier to kind of get a feel for what works and what doesn't. So my answer really is to just, um, to, I guess, time, <laughs> take time and learn, learn uh, what works for you and what doesn't find songs that you like and stuff that you want to be inspired by or stuff that you want to write similar to learn how those songs are played 
figure out how those how those uh, those leads go, figure out how, what their chord progressions are, and that will kind of inform some of your writing going forward, I think. Would I ever make a cameo? Lizzie Horror. No, I would not make a cameo. I've I've been asked so many times to do it and I just won't. I just don't have any interest in doing it. And plus I would rather do something like this that's free for people. So it's like that that's part of the reason why why I have an issue with stuff like Patreon. Like I love the idea of it. I love we're going down some some gray area right now. Uh, because I, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus that is doing like subscription stuff. But a big part of the reason why I don't like subscription model stuff is because I feel like it's kind of just a, a shitty money grab. And I know that that's not how everybody thinks about it because obviously there's some form of like you guys get something out of it. You Whether you want it or not, you're paying for it or I shouldn't say whether you want it or not, you're paying for it. If you want it, you're paying for it. Um, so there is a demand, but I feel like for me personally, it just feels like such, I don't know, it just feels scummy. Like I, just because obviously knowing that, take Cameo, for example, knowing that I could go on Cameo and knowing that there would be people that would pay to have me give them shout outs is like fine because there's a demand for it. But like, I just feel so shitty doing that. And so, I don't know. It just feels icky. Like, like making people pay so that I can tell them happy birthday or tell them good luck on a test. You know, it just feels like so cheap and like, I don't know. Um, but you know, like I said, there's a demand I don't want to knock it because clearly people are stoked on that and people are paying for those things and that's great. And if there's a demand for it, who am I to deny what people want and what people are offering? So, uh, but that's just how I look at it. And I think that's part of why I've always been like anti Instagram subscription, anti, um, you know, the Patreon thing is a little different, but I think it's, it's still, it's like, I feel like there's a, there's a better transaction there because it feels like at least on Patreon, you're, you're offering some sort of value to somebody. But again, people see value in getting shout outs. So I like, it, it's all subjective. And I, I just feel like I have such a hard time wanting to do that and wanting to participate in that when I would rather just do something like this where, you know, if people want to donate, they can absolutely not required. And, uh, and yeah, so that's my, my, my long winded answer for, uh, for cameo. Oh boy. I can't believe that you guys are still here. This is insane. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I want to see the show in Japan too. Listen, I would love to come to Japan. It's been, we've been one time and that was in 2010, I think. So it's been at least 13 years since we've been to Japan and I would love to go back. So you want us to come there? We want to go there, or at least I want to go there. I can't speak for everybody, but I know that I do. Plan on touring in Canada? Yes. Um, I know that this question is going to pop up. The answer to all of the touring questions is yes, we will get there eventually. So... Um, so Sadie DH says is the Patreon thing still in the works. So it's it was never really in the works. Kind of to piggyback off of my last comment, I kind of just put it out there to be like, is this something that would be worth people's time and also worth my time? 
And now obviously I know that there's a demand for it, but I think the other part of that, that kind of falls into the subscription thing is a huge thing that weighs on that decision to do that. And I just don't know if I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I want to feel like I'm obligated to, to be in a situation where I have to provide weekly or every two weeks or whatever, um, just because people are paying for it. You know, I would rather do something like YouTube where I can just kind of post whenever I feel like it and uh, nobody has to pay for it. And it's just kind of stuff that's out there because realistically the whole reason that I like YouTube so much is because I can do longer form stuff. I can make videos that I want to make. I can pre-record, edit, get my filmmaking side, uh, get, get that part of me out and, uh, and, and enjoy that part of, of the creative process. And then also you guys don't have to pay me because, uh, YouTube pays me through ad revenue and stuff. So not that it's much, but it's, it's, you know, enough for me to be like, okay, this is not that, that bad for me to continue to creating for me to be continuing to create, um, on a consistent basis. And then that way it continues to keep things free for you guys. I think I, I have such a hard time with money and wanting people to feel like they're getting value for what they want. And, um, again, that's all subjective and it's this weird gray area of like, what is important to whatever is important is important to whoever's buying it and not necessarily like, it's not up to me to decide whether something is, is for you or not. Um, but I think that I, I try to do my best to look out for people and try to do my best to, you know, just, just not be a scumbag because it's, I think when you're in a position to be able to just accept stuff like that from people, it's, it's easy. And I've seen it happen to other people where it just, they just fall into this. Like, it's like, dude, really? Like, that's what you're going to do. And, and I, and I, so I feel hyper aware of that and I don't want, I, I don't want people to feel like they're being taken advantage of. I don't want me to feel like I'm taking advantage of people. I don't even know how we got on this, this topic of conversation, but, um, Oh, Patreon. That's where, that's where my head's at. So I, I kind of go down this rabbit hole of like, here's, here's all these, here's all the great things that could come from me doing a Patreon, but then here's all these really shitty negative things that I don't know if I want to deal with. Um, so yeah, so that's my answer. It's, it's not a solid answer, um, uh, but it's, it's just something that I've, I'm like working on. Uh, I am, or I'm not, I'm not working on it. I'm trying to, I was trying to feel it out and see how people were doing or how people were, Jesus Christ. I can't talk. I've talked myself out of being able to talk anymore. Um, I, I'm just going to stop talking about Patreon because you understand where I'm coming from. boy um okay so sneak peek on your guys's next album <laughs> Chantel uh, you know if if we had anything for it then I I might but I if we don't have any well no we have bits but we don't have anything crazy I'm trying to read this guy's or this person's thing Raskram Solo, that's the the word. Asked when I started playing guitar. I started playing guitar when I was twelve in middle school, and uh, had a really rough time starting. So, so this is exactly why I wanted to go into a Q and A style thing because I knew that you guys giving me direction would just lead me down some paths that I was not expecting to take. So when I first started playing guitar, 
I started with I'm trying to think of what exactly the the step by step thing was. The big thing for me was lessons, but I quit taking lessons after like six months because I was like, this isn't moving fast enough. I just want to play songs. And my instructor wanted to teach me scales and chords. And I was like, no, I don't want to learn any of that. I don't care about any of that. I just want to be able to play. And it's so funny now looking back at that because I am still so much of that person when it comes to a lot of stuff that I, that I do, it's a lot of just like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to jump into whatever it is that I want to do and figure it out as I go. And I, in hindsight, when it came to guitar, I wish that I would have stuck it out, learned all of those scales and chords. And I mean, I eventually learned a lot of them over time, but I wish that I would have stuck to some sort of like regimented, uh, like routine. So every week or so I could, I had set amounts of things to practice because I feel like I just kind of plateaued after a while. And I want to say after like, after I was like 25 or 26 and being in the band for a few years, I was like, I just don't need to get any better than this. Like, I don't care to be able to shred. I have no interest in soloing. I have no interest in any, any of that. I can play all of our songs. So who cares? Uh, But now I think that I'm realizing that it's less about being a shredder and being like, I can play the fastest thing in the world and more of just knowing that I can play cleanly play anything that you put in front of me. And I think that that is the part that I completely overlooked and yeah, but I'm never going to learn because I am a stubborn bitch (laughs) to put it very bluntly. Alyssa Colvin, how did it feel to play with the band for the first time when you joined? So <laughs> my first show was at man I can't remember can't even remember the uh the venue. My first show was at the it was some VFW hall in Dixon City, I think. Or fire hall or something. But the show was okay. I remember being like, uh, you know, it was okay. I felt more proud of myself for my stage presence than anything else. Just because I was like, I've barely stepped foot on stage ever. And the only times that I have were in the past on much smaller scales. And, um, so I didn't know how that was going to work. And, So I think coming away from that and having people be like, oh, you fit really well made me be like, okay, this, I don't have to worry about being, uh, you know, my stage presence live at all. Playing and being nervous live was a little bit of a different story, um, but it was, it was an experience for sure. So Danielle Santos says, uh, what's going on in your mind to have the audience and fans crying and almost having a heart attack at the concerts? How is that feeling? Is it funny or is it very emotional? I So <clears throat> I think what a lot of people don't realize is that for a majority of musicians, at least a lot of the people that I've talked to, when you go up on stage, you do not like nothing happens up here. It's like you're working on pure adrenaline and you're so focused on what you're doing that it's really hard to pay attention to what everyone else is doing or what's going on around you. And 
there's times where like I've been down rabbit holes in my own brain of like, like, man, I, I'm in the middle of a song or I'm singing and I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat for dinner or, you know, what, just like weird shit that it's, you're just, you would never know, but, um, I, I'm much more focused on like what's going on in my head and what I'm doing than what anybody else is doing. And also I know people have asked about like people screaming and saying stuff. And I'm going to tell you right now that I do not hear the crowd at all because I have in-ears that block out everything. So if you're screaming at me, I can't hear what you're saying. So don't be offended if I, if you say something to me and I don't hear it. Um, it's just uh, it's just because I don't I have in ears in and I can't hear you. It's like about being in my own little world, and it's uh, it's it's great for playing and being, you know, being focused on what you're doing. Do you remember Kyra Smith says? Do you remember the church show or the show in a church in 2011? Uh, no, I don't. I have a really, really bad memory, especially when it comes to playing shows and meeting people and remembering. I remember faces a lot more than I remember names. And I think just from being in so many different places and playing so many different venues that it's hard to remember a lot of a lot of things. Unless I go back to it, then I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this. So no, I don't remember playing a show in a church. I, I mean, it, We've played a bunch of shows in churches, but I don't know specifically from 2011. Vicky says, what mix do you use and hear in your in your monitor live? You know what's funny is that a lot of times when we play a show, I think about that. And I'm I always wish that I could show people what I'm listening to because I feel like the average person would be like, how do you listen to this for an hour? Because it's what I have in my mix is I have drums. I have none of Chris because if I hear him sing and I'm trying to sing harmonies, it will absolutely fuck me up. So um, I don't have Chris in my ears. If he's talking on stage, I have no idea what he's saying. There's been times where he'll say stuff about me or to me and point and I'm like what the fuck is going on because I can't I just can't hear him um so I have Vin I have um I have a lot of myself in the center I have a click so I stay on time and I have a tiny 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 little bit of Ryan in my left ear and I have a little tiny bit of Justin so it's mostly just me and Vin and click a lot of click and I feel like if people aren't used to hearing that, then uh, you're listening to, or th if they were to hear it, they would be like, you really just listen to a metronome for an hour? It's like, yeah, I do. I have to. I don't have a choice. Uh, it's uh, it's how I stay on time. But uh, I always just think it's funny just to to think about it from an outside perspective because I know that a lot of people have never listened to a mix in ears before and so hearing it i think would be really interesting maybe sometime i'll i'll figure out a way to record a mix so that i can i can put it in a video or something and show you guys because i think it's ridiculous <clears throat> when are we getting the scoring the end of the world behind the scenes documentary we are desperate please rick case um listen i am not in charge of that that was not my idea that was, uh, I'm, I'm not going to throw names under the bus, but I was nowhere near involved in that at all. Um, I wish that I was because it, you know, it would be done, would have been done a long time ago, but, um, I was not in charge of that. I had nothing to do with that. And, um, I don't have an answer for you. I thought it was going to be finished. Uh, I, I thought that we were going to work on it. Um, maybe late last year and finish it and that just never happened so I have no idea Don't I, I wish that I had an answer because I want to see it I want all of that footage to come out but I 
like I said, I don't, I don't know. Have you tr played or tried an instrument other than the guitar? Emily says. So uh, I have played a little bit of drums. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not a Vin, so I am not very good. But um, I can do some simple beats. I can do a little, I can do one fill. And, uh, and that's, that's all. Um, i trying to think of anything else. Obviously, I, I played bass. That's about it. I have a little keyboard for recording, but I don't I don't know the first thing about playing piano. It's a lot of just me going, bung, bung, dong, and just playing notes that I think sound good. So, I am not a I'm not very uh, uh, I'm not a very cross instrumentalist. It's really just just guitar for me. Vibe Productions, any Ibanez signature guitars coming? Listen, I, yeah, I would love for that to be a thing, but I have not been asked, and uh, I am not going to, I'm not going to to try and start drama because I don't have a, I don't have a signature because that's a little bit ridiculous. But I do think that I've been asked enough that it's worth a conversation. But it hasn't happened yet. So maybe someday. Um, 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 um. Alexia Castillo says, can you say something in Spanish? Por favor. I, I actually took three years of Spanish in high school. And... I can't, when I'm around people that are speaking Spanish, I can kind of pick up words here and there and kind of, for the most part, get a gist of what somebody's saying, but I can't speak it for the life of me. Vincent, can we get an update on Fester since he made an appearance in the last Q&A? Um, he is good. Fester is great. I actually, I've been watching him for the last week because he technically doesn't live here anymore. Um, but I've been watching him for the last week and he's great. He's on some meds right now because he had a little bit of a fever. And uh, so he's been great. He's sleeping in the the living room out there. Kate says, "Will you ever get a TikTok?" Uh, no, I will not. I know that there's a lot of people that insist that that is the future, but I just I don't have any interest. <clears throat> it's the same thing with like YouTube Shorts. I just don't have any interest in that short form content. It's just I just don't feel like it. Ricky Hollow says, any more vocal covers planned? Um, not vocal covers, but I did just record vocals for a song, for a full song. Um, and hopefully that will be coming out soon. I don't know if or when or any other information about it. I just know that I recorded it and I'm hoping that it turns out okay. I ha actually had to make a shitty you can't see it on the other side of this i have this specifically framed so you don't see the shit show that is over there but i made a makeshift vocal booth with blankets and uh and sleeping bags and yeah because i don't have a soundproof vocal booth to record vocals in so it kind of looks like a shitty fort that you can stand in. It's like two feet by two feet in, you know, so it's just big enough for me to stand in with a stand 
and record. What are some artists or songs that you're listening to and would recommend from Oblivious Fran? Um, let me pull up my Spotify and I will show you or tell you what I have been listening. I've actually been listening to a lot of uh, soundtrack music because I said a little bit earlier that I was doing a lot of writing. And so I tend to put on soundtracks when I'm writing to kind of get a little bit more of a, a feel for the world that I'm living in. And it kind of makes me feel more like I'm in that world. So I've been listening to a lot of soundtracks, most notably um, the soundtrack for uh, the movie The Road. Um, the Last of Us, the game soundtrack. And what movie is this? Oh, the Book of Eli. So if you couldn't tell what the genre of this story is that I'm writing just based on those, I uh, I, I can't, I, can't, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, as far as actual artists and actual songs go, I've been listening to a lot of, not so much recently, but within the last month or so, um, the self-titled Youngblood album has, has been just fucking on repeat. Um, I've never listened to him before this album, so I don't know how it compares to anything else he's put out, but I just can't stop listening to it, or I couldn't stop at the time. You know, it's been a little bit since I got out of my system, but, uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of, it just depends on also if I'm like working on music, I'll start working on something that I feel like has a specific type of vibe for a, a song. And then I'll start listening to that artist to be like, well, how did they go about doing what they're doing? Kind of like I, I touched on this a little bit earlier when I was talking about songwriting and I, I feel like I feel like that they go hand in hand, you know, when, when you're working on music, it's hard to not be inspired by what you're listening to. But I also think that it's important to be inspired by something. And, you know, we, we as a band have never, ever shied away from our influences. We've always kind of worn them on our sleeve and been like, this is who we're inspired by. We're going to write a song that sounds like this. And I think that that's something that a lot of people, they kind of talk down on because then it's like, well, you're just ripping off this band or that band. But I think at the end of the day, you're your own band and you're your own, you know, nobody's going to sound like Chris when they're singing. Nobody's going to put a vocal melody over a song like he does. So I could write a, I could completely rip off a song from anybody but if he sings on it, it's going to be an emotionless song. And not that that's how I, how I want to work, but I'm just saying that I'm getting the point across that as a band or as an artist, when you're working on something, it's going to inevitably just be something that you, you, you as a band or artist are creating because of, you know, who is making it. Um, I don't think that motionless would sound like motionless if it wasn't me and Chris and, and Ryan and all the people that, and Justin and all the people that have written on songs for us in the past. I don't think that we would be motionless or have the motionless sound if it weren't for all of those people, regardless of what they were listening to or what they were, you know, trying to write or be like, I want to write a song that sounds like this, um, regardless of any of that it's going to inevitably sound like a motionless song just because of how it's put together and how it's arranged. And I think that that's an important thing to remember if you're writing music or working on something creatively that even if it, if it, uh, you know, 
lends a little bit heavy on your inspiration, that's fine because nobody's going to write nobody's going to write the song or write the story or or make the art piece or whatever it is you're doing the way that you would do it. And I think that's really important to remember. And I think that that's something that people forget is that like a good analogy of this is saying a lot of times I've read that people when they're coming up with, with short stories or stories for a movie or whatever, they're like, well, don't tell your idea to anybody. Cause that, cause somebody's going to steal it. It's like, yeah, but nobody's going to write it the way that I'm going to write it. And that's the important thing is that nobody's going to produce whatever it is the way that you would do, the way that you would do it, the way that you would produce it. Um, so yeah. So if you're, if you're in a space where you're like, well, I can't write a song like this because that sounds like this person would well, yeah, but that it's not that person. It's you, you're the one creating it. And it's at your, at your fingertips and at your hands that it's, it's coming from at, in, from your heart, from your head. So don't be afraid to lean into your influences. I think that that's such a stupid thing for people to say that you can't because, um, because you're an artist and, and it's going to flow through you and it's going to be something that you create. Same thing with, I, I, I don't need to keep going. You guys understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Oh man drama going on in the chat I think Maru Gin or Jin uh, says what do you think about fan art have you ever seen these fan art as in like drawings and paintings that people give you or give us I should say um if you if that's what you're talking about i think they're great i have i i don't know what exactly to do with them yet because i have so many different like little things that people have made like keychains and um you know paintings on pieces of wood and um I'm trying to think of all of the other things there's been like crocheted stuff there's been cross stitched pieces and I don't really know what to do with any of it because I, I'm not sure, like, it feels weird for me to decorate my a room in, like, I don't know, my band stuff or stuff that reminds me of my band. So, um, I, so right now I have all that stuff in one spot. Um, I just don't know, like, if I should. There's actually, so there's a couple pieces that people have made that I've hung up and framed. Um, but for the most part, I have all of it, all of it put together and in a safe spot, I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with all of it. Um, but I think that it's great. I love, I love when people use their creativity to show us support and show us that they like what we're doing and like our band. And, uh, yeah, so, so thank you for making, uh, album art. Karen Santos says thoughts on Villa Vallo's album. You know, I've gotten a lot of people asking me that and I have not listened. Um, I, that's a lie. I've listened to, I think the first couple singles that came out and I was like, Oh, okay. Kind of sounds just like a, I don't know, like a, an off brand hymn which, you know, makes sense because he is this pretty much the, the sole writer of all of their music. But it wasn't anything that hit me in the feels the way that him does. So I um, honestly have not listened to it, any of it other than those two songs. So, um, and I don't know if I have any intention to, to be quite honest with you. Um, just not a priority. Jessica Foster says, would you rather be able to play every language or know how to play every instrument? That is a, okay. So the, the counter to that question is, 
can I still, if I choose to play every instrument, which would be super helpful in writing music, can I also still speak English? Because if I can't speak anything, that would be tough. Uh, that would make the question much tougher if you're trying to do a would you rather, like a really hard would you rather. Um, I think I think I would rather know how to play every instrument just because it it would be so much more helpful in writing songs. Hmm. How did you get Sledgehammer? Sledgehammer asks, that's a hard name. Sledgehammer asks, how did you get into photography? How did you figure out which camera was right for you and how did you learn to use it? So, oh boy, this is a, let's see how much time do we got here? I don't have a watch on, but um, the motion was necessary. I, I, have been doing video related stuff since I was in high school. I took a bunch of video classes all four years of my high school. I uh, was shooting on Canon, uh, what are those called now? Canon C, Canon, no, it wasn't the C100s because those are Canon, Canon C1 maybe? It was the old, old Canon camcorders that would record on the mini DV tapes. So we were recording on those and uploading the, the analog tape to digital and final cut pro and editing these stupid little skit videos in high school. And that kind of was what started my love for video and, and, uh, and doing that. So before going into music, <clears throat> or actually I should say alongside of just playing music and being in bands and, and playing guitar. One of my, my thoughts was, okay, once I get out of school, once I get out of high school, I'm going to move to Los Angeles and I'm going to do something in, in Hollywood. I'm going to do something in the film world. I don't know whether that means I'm going to operate a camera. I don't know whether that means I'm going to write. I don't know. I don't know what that looks like, but I just knew that that was where I was going to ultimately end up. And I, uh, you know, obviously it didn't work out that way because I'm here now in Pennsylvania, which is just about as far away from Hollywood as you can get. But, um, so when the band took off or when I was, when I had the opportunity to join the band and that kind of, that, that part of my life kind of geared me off into a different, a different path. I kind of just forgot about film and photography and all of that. And it wasn't until maybe like six or seven years ago that I, I was like, man, I should pick up a camera and start, start shooting again. Cause I actually, <clears throat> I knew a guy that took these awesome pictures of, of, uh, Northern lights and was, Oh, he lived in, um, Alaska. He was always taking photos of, of, uh, these awesome nature landscapes and, and water and pine trees and all this shit. And I was like, man, I would love to take photos like that. Especially the fact that we get to travel around and do that all the time. That feels like such a no brainer for me to, to, to just, get a camera and have access to all these places that people don't normally have access to. So I bought a camera and I actually asked him, I said, what, what do you use? What should I get? And he kind of directed me. And from there it was like, I fell back into my high school youth years. And I was just like, Oh my God, I, I had forgot how much I loved doing this and how much I loved uh, I love video and, and shooting things and making stuff look like a movie. And, and that's kind of how that started. 
Um, I still, to this day, am much less interested in photography than I am film, just because... Actually, that's not true. I like... How do I want to put this? That is true for the majority of the part. I'm much more inclined to go towards video and film than I am to photography. And I think that, that a lot of that just is um, just because of you know my history of growing up basically making videos in high school and um and then obviously just my love of film and watching movies and watching amazing tv shows now that are so much more involved than than movies are um it just kind of i don't know pushed me back into this direction of like oh i forgot that i had this other thing that i really love to do music isn't the be all end all thing that i always thought it was and so it it's kind of it, it's been refreshing but also kind of complicated things in a way because now i'm like well i love making music and i love what i do but i also love this other thing that i do as well and i feel like i do it do it pretty well and it's a great way for me to express myself through that i love expressing uh Express expression and storytelling through a visual way is so cool to me. And but then I also on my third tripod I have writing. I'm just like I have these three things that I just I, I can't like I can never focus on just one. It's always this rotation of just the three things, which like I said before, it's amazing because I I never get bored of what I'm doing. I always have something to kind of fall back on and work on, but it can complicate things sometimes because especially if we're going into like writing an album, if I'm not in the writing mood for writing music, it's really tough. And that can kind of complicate things, especially if I'm in, you know, a, if I'm trying to write stories or trying to work on videos, it can make writing music really complicated and really hard and insufferable. So um, it can be challenging, but I think that I, I have done a pretty good job at balancing things and I feel like I have a good grasp on how to manage my time. And I feel like I've been doing it long enough at this point, the three of them, to know when it's time to shift gears. So um, I know that that's a really, really long, like I just went off on a tangent for that question, but, uh, but that is how I got into photography, um, and, and video stuff. Trying to, I'm trying to make sure I don't miss questions here. Um, Brie Dubé, is that how you say that? Um, thank you for your donation. I appreciate you saying that. My day has been great, and this has been amazing to share with you guys. I hope that uh, you're having a very lovely day as well. Um, Jesus. <laughs> G Jesus? Jesus with a G. Have you ever worked with analog film? I have not, and I've always wanted to, but I'm so scared to because of how expensive it is and how uh, how finicky and how particular that it can be. And I think that's why I love my Fujifilm cameras so much is because I can get the same vibe as analog without having to really deal with all of the hassle of analog. Um, I know that that's not by any means a proper way of going about uh, about it because i feel like at least once in my life i need to experience using it but um i just don't have the time i that that really is what it comes down to i just don't have the time to do it um slaughter doll that's fucking hard too <laughs> Would you ever consider opening a P.O. box for people to send you stuff if they're unable to attend shows? Seems to have worked well for Vinny so far. So I have had a P.O. box for a really long time, um, especially for 
just sending stuff out and receiving. That's this is a stupid way to put it. Um, for for business related stuff, I've had a PO box for a really long time, but I've never spoken publicly about it because I ha- I've always just been like I don't know if I really want it out there. Um, but really, the PO box doesn't get used. So um, if you want to send stuff to it, by all means, I'll put the I'll put a link in the description of this video, and whoever wants to send whatever they want can send it. Favorite candle smell. Favorite candle smell. Um. Well, that's a good question. I am a really big sandalwood guy, so I love anything that has to do with sandalwood. I actually have uh, uh, my my cologne that I have is sandalwood. So, in case anybody was strangely wondering that question um i would say sandalwood is probably my favorite smell regardless of what it's for um pierce the becca do you ever think it's too late to join a band or start uh learning an instrument i do not think that it's too late to ever start doing anything creative um i i think trying to prepare myself for this um tangent that i'm about to go on so see this is why i feel like like podcasting would be such a good medium for me because like i'm having this conversation like it feels like i'm having a conversation with you guys but when i'm not doing this i'm still just talking as if i'm talking to somebody just like this so I don't know where I'm going with that. Um, I my my answer to your question is I don't think that it's too late to ever start a pod. Jesus Christ, not a podcast. If you want to start a podcast, you can start a podcast. That's fine. Um, I don't think it's ever too late to start doing anything that you want to do. I think that it is, you know, unless you're unless you're like 45 and trying to join the UFC, I think it's probably not going to happen. Um, but you know, when it comes to creative stuff, I think that it <laughs> we're only on this planet for so long. We only have a limited time here. And I think that I've always been somebody that would rather go through life and look back and say, I'm glad that I tried all of these things, even though some of them didn't work. Or some of them didn't pan out the way that I was hoping. I'm glad that I did it all, rather than looking back and regretting that I never tried any of it. Um, because sometimes you do things or create things that you didn't anticipate having the reception or or having the kind of uh, uh, carrying the kind of weight that it carries for you as an individual and personally. And sometimes that can be unexpected and, and something that happens out of left field. And I think that to not partake in those things is a disservice to just living in general. And I feel like it's such a, a hindrance to just being a person and experiencing life. I think that everybody should go out and try anything that they want because Chris actually has a great theory about this and he always says how am i supposed to know if i'm not amazing at something if i don't try it and i think that that's always something that i think about because you could be amazing at something that you never knew you even had that skill but if you never try it you'll never know and i think that that's such an important rule to live by is if you have an opportunity or you have an in, even just a slight inkling of an interest in something do it see what happens because um nothing can make your life more fulfilling than trying new things and just growing as a person so hope that that answers your question got really uh really deep there for a second
Christy C K R U. Not even gonna try to pronounce that. I don't know if that's actually a, a name or if that's just a, a bunch of letters put together. Um, are there any film? Are there sorry? Are there any video for film pro or film projects in the works? If so, what can you tell us? I do not have anything in the works as far as that goes. The last thing that I worked on was the Varials music video. And outside of that, I, I have written a handful of short film scripts. Um, a couple of them are ones that I really want to make. Just a matter of having the time and finding the actors and putting the budget together for it. Um, but they're not high on my priority list. I tend to work on a on a sort of, I don't know, internal scale of what is most important for me to accomplish at any given time. And right now, that thing for me is uh, the the novel that I'm working on. And next month, that will change, or in April, that will change when I start working on music. Um, so I'm trying to get as much of that book done as I can while the uh, the time is there. But um, I would love to do more film stuff. It's just a matter of, like I said, matter of time, matter of getting the right pieces together. And uh, yeah, hopefully it will uh, work out. I'd love to translate some of my shorts into my short uh, stories into films. And I feel like this novel that I'm working on, it would be a really, really, really good movie. Um, I feel like it would translate really well. I don't mean that to say like this, this idea is so fucking good. Uh, I just mean in like a visual translation, I feel like it would be so, uh, such an amazing thing to be able to see visually that I feel like it would translate really well in that regard. Hmm. missing missing questions here i'm sorry for people that are donating and asking questions i don't know how this i didn't realize that i could click on the donation and read the question um so i'm sorry for not getting to questions if you donated um but thank you for for donating lexi says uh i've been playing music for years but i have no idea where to start as far as producing it any advice um i would say if you're trying to go for something that is if you're trying to like home record i would say really the only thing that you need to do is buy a, a, some sort of interface that you could plug into your computer and figure out how to use a program like cubase or like i use cubase ryan uses cubase chris uses logic i think um but i know cubase is really hot right now um or you know, Pro Tools, anything like that. And there's a million tutorials on YouTube or um, you know, just online. There's a lot of online resources to learn how to use those programs. I would, if you're trying to just kind of, I don't know, take baby steps into recording music for yourself, I would go that route rather than shelling out a bunch of money to spend on a producer when you're not sure exactly who to go to or what what your end goal is i would say that's probably the best the best bet uh bailey parker thank you for your donation uh what is your favorite hobby outside of the band and home life See, this is this is one of those questions where it's like my my hobby is my home. My ho my hobby and the things that I work on are or sorry, the things that I work on are my hobbies. Um I, I don't I don't know anything other than just working on the things that I like to do. And that's why I have so many uh that's why I have such a hard time sitting down to watch movies or watch TV shows or play video games because I would rather write. I would rather work on a video. I'd rather like yesterday I spent probably 6 hours editing a a fake 
um, a fake trailer for a, a Netflix crime documentary that doesn't exist. And, uh, and I just, yeah, like that's the kind of shit that I love to do. And it feels like, like I, I, I can, I can say, man, I never get a break, but I, the thing is I don't need a break because I love everything that I do and everything that I do just, just feels great. And I, uh, yeah, so this is why I feel like it's so important to have creative things that you try because the more that you have, the more that you just can fill your life with these things that you love doing and uh, part of just making life enjoyable. Can we see it? Banna Kraus says, can we see it? What are we referring to here? Can we see what? Uh, oh, the trailer. The trailer. Yes, yeah, sorry. That's my my uh, my ADD brain going all over the place. Um, yes, eventually. I, ha I have to film a couple little pieces for it to finish it. But, uh, but yes, you, you'll see it eventually. And you're going to be like, wow, I really just watched a trailer for this. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think that it's really funny. Am I going to be releasing more merch? Yes. I actually, I wish that I could show you the design, uh, for the next hoodie that I have. Um, maybe I can pull it up on my phone. Actually, you know what? I probably can pull it up on my phone because I sent it to a couple people to get their opinions. Do I want to spoil this? I'll let it simmer for a little bit and feel how and see how it feels. Um, oh snap! It's Mandy. Does your key necklace have a special meaning? Yes and no. My my I don't actually don't have it on right now, which is a little weird my my key necklace i it has a special meaning in in the sense that it came from a key ring from my like a collection of keys that my grandfather had when i was uh growing up and he i, I got them somehow after he died um i don't even know how i think it was years later cuz cuz he passed away when i was eight i think and i was really close with him and um and so i found i think i think my grandma gave me the key ring and was like i think that he would want you to have these um years later and i just picked out one that i thought looked the best and i i just kind of started wearing it so in the sense of like does it have a special origin? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but like, I don't wear it to feel close to him or anything like that. It's just, I just started wearing it because I was like, this is cool to have something to remember him by. Um, so, so yes and no. Deep Ricky lore unlocked. I like that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm seeing people say Lonnie. Is Lonnie in here? I swear to God, Lonnie, if you're in here. Um... Dang, Chris Getman, man, that's a name and a person I have not talked to in forever. Dude, I hope that you are doing great. Thanks for uh, for the donation. You didn't have to do that. Um, appreciate you. I uh, hope everything's well in your life. Man, I, I, I can't remember the last time that I saw you, but I hope that you're doing great and I hope that life has been treating you well and you're happy and 
and uh, healthy. Hopefully I will see you soon. Man, there that was a that was unexpected. Actually, you know what's funny is uh Lonnie is actually in the trailer that I was editing yesterday, if you can believe that. It's actually a couple of guest appearances from people in the trailer from other bands. So that's something exciting to look forward to. Man, Kate, who's your favorite Breaking Bad character? Obviously Jesse Pinkman. His story arc is so goddamn tragic. And Aaron Paul is so fucking good in it, uh, in that role. And it, like, I can't even think about all of the shit that he goes through without just getting stabbed right in the heart. What do you mean spoilers? The show's been out for like 10 years. Excited for tour ne next month. Absolutely stoked on the tour. Um, I love Beartooth Boys. Caleb's my my homie. I love all of them very very much, and uh, and they're they're one of the one of the few bands that we've really really clicked with over the years. And anytime that we're in the same city, whether or not we're on the same show, we tend to kind of gravitate towards each other. And I'm very excited to actually be on a tour with them. Um, 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 did I learn something new after the filming of Werewolf? Uh, <laughs> like in what sense? Uh, in in the video sense, I I guess I I learned that blue screen and green screen, which I already knew, it was a pain in the ass, uh, and I have zero interest in doing green screen on that level, so. Um, as far as shooting goes, it was pretty run of the mill uh, music video, other than it just being on a massive scale. It was the biggest, the biggest music video set we've ever had, and so in that regard, it felt crazy. The studio that we recorded it in is the same place that they recorded all of Britney Spears' music videos, uh, so that's a, a cool little fun fact. Uh, but but yeah, so it's pretty pretty standard of a of a music video as far as shooting it goes. It's a lot of just standing around and waiting. I learned that whiteout contacts suck. Probably, uh, I actually they weren't bad for me because I am used to well. First of all, well, I guess that you can kind of see them in some of the shots. I was going to say you can't really see them at all, but I used to wear contacts way back in the day, so I did not have any interest in, uh, or sorry, I did not have any problem wearing them at all. I didn't really have any interest in wearing them either because I didn't think that they were going to show up, but I... Uh, I didn't have any issues. Justin had a lot of issues with his. Um, I think now he's doing better because he's been he's been wearing contacts every night, so he's he's handling them a little bit better. Um, Irene Bauer says, "What's the best experience with music video shooting and production?" I'll how about this? I'll tell you my worst. So the worst music video experience that I've ever had by far was shooting uh shooting the devil's night music video so we we shot that overnight and we had to get rained on 
as you can see in the video. Played in the rain and it was, it must have been like 45 degrees outside. So we would get rained on. And then in between takes, all of us would just be like shivering, just waiting for the next take for people to say, all right, let's, let's uh, run it back and roll it again. And it was that for a good long, long time. It felt like the longest night of my life. And then after it was shot it in uh, Long Island in New York City. And then after that, we had to drive home in the morning. So it was a good time. Very, very good time. Uh, Hattie says, are you going to join Caleb's DJ set at the after party in Leeds? I didn't realize that there was an after party set, but, um, I'm willing to bet that literally everybody will be there because everybody had such a good time at the other DJ set that we did in Malta that I'm like 90% sure that every single person is going to show up there and hang out. Savannah T, are you going to do more of This Place is Haunted? I would love to do more of This Place is Haunted. It's just a matter of, you know, coming up with the story. And um, I, it's a lot more of, actually, I was going to say it's a lot more story than people think, but the actual truth of that is that it's a lot of just the story comes together in the edit. Um, Like the last one that we did at the rave, we were like, there's no way this is going to be a good story. There's no way that we're going to make a video out of this. And somehow it just happened. There were pieces that I, I overlooked when we were filming that I was like, wow, this would not have come together if it wasn't for, you know, X, Y, Z pieces. So, um, I think it's just a matter of, of doing it. You know, we, we filmed a piece of the of the next episode we still have to finish it so i'm hoping that we can f we can find a, a good place probably we'll find a good place in uh in the uk or uh, europe that looks a little spooky and we can finish that episode but yes i would love to do more lucid duncan says what inspired your short haircut um I, nothing inspired it really i just was tired of having long hair to be honest um I, I i got to a point where i felt like i was always wearing my hood and i hated the way that it looked the second i i got out of the shower and you know washed it um and then i hated there was this, this really small window of time where i liked the way that it looked and it was like two to three days after i'd washed my hair was like perfect timing was where my hair wasn't too poofy and frizzy, but where it also had enough texture to where it looked good and it had enough volume to where it looked like it sat well. And then anytime after that, it was just like flat and boring. So then I was constantly wearing a hood and, uh, and I was just like, this is dumb. I don't want to keep doing this. And, um, yeah, so that, that was the reasoning for that. And I just was, I just wanted something new and different. And I love when people tell me that I look better with long hair because they say it to me like me cutting my hair has affected them personally. And I think that that's absolutely hilarious that me doing something for myself really bothers somebody that, that much. So, uh, thanks, Audra. I appreciate that. Didn't think I'd see you in here, but hi. <laughs> Having a body sucks. <laughs> yeah, it does. It sucks so much. Jesus, this is like, it's crazy because I keep seeing the viewer count on this, like just pop up and down and I don't know what's accurate. Sometimes it's super low. So I, I'm like, oh, everybody left. And then all of a sudden it will shoot back up. I'm like, oh, everybody's here. Wow. Um, 
and maybe that's just because everybody's leaving and then people are coming back in. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if you guys are just tuning in, thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, if you have been sticking around this whole time, thank you for being here and listening to me ramble. Cause that's, li I've just been talking for two and a half hours at this point. So, uh, so thank you for putting up with me. Is this the end? I mean, it can be. Do you want me to be to be done? Um, I I didn't anticipate going longer than even like an hour, but here we are, um, over over two hours. I guess that's just a testament to how much I fucking talk. I know that people are are always like, "You're so quiet and shy," but it's not that. It's less that I'm quiet and shy, and more like I just reserve what I have to say for when I feel like it's important. Um, I, I, when I'm in a situation that there's a lot of people, I'm very much like, I like to step back and observe and I like to see what people are doing, who's talking to who, what conversations are happening much more than I like to just barge in and put myself in. I guess that's part of just the nature of being, a uh, an introvert. But um, I I just feel like yeah I'm I'm definitely not not shy like I have no problem talking to anybody ever. Love the rambling. <laughs> Julie says, "How did you find your new tattoo artist? I know it can be hard to get someone to find another's work." I, <clears throat> so my new tattoo artist, um, good question. I actually knew of her from other people that I knew getting tattooed by her. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach out and just see if she's interested in tattooing me. And, uh, because I think that what she does is great. She does really great black and gray stuff if that's the style that you're looking for. Uh, but yeah, it can definitely be tough to find artists that you mesh well with because sometimes an artist does really great work, but you don't feel like comfortable sitting there for two or three hours at a time. And so sometimes it can be hard to find an artist that you really get along with and feel like, um, the artist I've been going to now is, uh, has been great. She's super easy to get along with and we kind of jive on a bunch of different, different topics and super easy to talk to. And yeah, so I think it's, it's a lot of just, if you're looking for a new artist, finding other people that who, who they've gone to and figure out if that person's style is something that you're interested in and tattoos are weird. I, you know, there's my whole right arm is not in a style that I even remotely like. Um, but, you know, you don't know unless you go through it and get them done. And then years later, you have life experience and you're like, oh, wow, I really don't like that. Um, and, you know, it's not something that I would ever go in and get changed or removed. It's just like, that's not the style that I like. And, um, and so, yeah, what I, what I, if I hadn't gotten my, my right arm done in the style that I have it done in, I probably would get something different on it at this point, but it's not enough to, you know, go in and change anything because also a lot of them are like time stamp stories. You know, I've, everything that I have, I have for a reason and they all mean something to me, you know, whether that's a big thing or a little thing. So I, I, I don't think that anything, I don't think that tattoos are, you know, unless you're getting a cover up or unless you're getting something added, 
I think that getting a tattoo removed is kind of silly unless it's something like super offensive or something that some ideology that you just don't don't fit in anymore or you don't think like that anymore um but i just feel like it's it's just pain for no reason because getting lasered is much more painful than getting tattooed and i feel like you know you're getting a tattoo for a reason and if you are just gonna go in and laser it and be like there was a tattoo there but it's not there anymore that just feels so i don't know it just feels like you're deleting a part of your history and that feels wrong to me so that's my personal take again tattoos are subjective to whoever's getting them and uh that's that's how i feel zen what's my ideal starbucks coffee shop order uh jesus if i get starbucks i'm getting a, an oat milk latte because their coffee is burnt and tastes like fucking garbage um uh, and the oat milk makes it smooth and and nice. Um, if I'm going to any other coffee shop, I will get a latte usually with probably almond milk. <laughs> I know that that's such a like silly thing. Um, it depends. If I'm going to like a roaster, then I definitely will get a, a black coffee, like a drip pour over coffee or something, just because I want to know what their uh, their beans taste like and their flavors. Uh, the, the flavor profile is, um, and typically they're going to do it better than I could do it at my house. So I want to taste what they have to offer. That sounds weirdly sexual. Uh, Ashley says, is there anything that you miss about Washington state? Um, I, you know what? I really miss the pine trees. There's trees here in Pennsylvania, but they're not the same. They're not the same as the insanely tall super super um what's that uh that word I'm, I'm thinking of for like when you can smell something really strongly um that really really nice pine smell that they put off everything about that is amazing i miss that about washington for sure christian Wow. Thanks, dude. Christian Christian uh says, I'm so proud of how much you've grown with this channel and I'm happy for you. That's all. I love you, man. I love you too. I hope that you're doing well with your family and I hope that everything has been amazing with you. You've been he happy, healthy. Um for people that don't know, Christian used to drum tech for us back in the day and uh now he now he makes videos and uh and works in the video space and so much like myself him and i kind of bounce ideas back and forth and talk about camera gear and um, nerd out about just shit that i can't really talk to with anybody else and you know over all these years of him not being a part of our group he's always been somebody that is my first like something some new camera comes out or some some crazy update happens i'm like i have to tell christian about this or i have to get his opinion on what he thinks about this and uh so it's great to have friends that do that that enjoy the nerdy things that you like as well so thank you christian uh, i love you i hope you're doing well great to hear from you Bree Dubay, thank you for your donation. Top on the topic of tats, what was the least painful? I've never gotten one. Um, okay, well, if you fear pain, I would say to not get one ever, because they are not fun. Um, I think that after getting my sternum tattooed and my neck tattooed, there's really not anywhere else in my body that I can imagine being any more painful for myself. Um, so I would say this is a tough thing to talk, to talk about because when you're talking about pain threshold and spots on your body that are sensitive, some people find specific spots less sensitive than others. Like I know that 
a lot of people, actually a lot of people recently have told me that their hand, the top of their hands felt like they hurt a lot and that they were super painful, but I don't remember my hands hurting all that much. Granted, I, I, I got, you know, both of them done almost a decade ago at this point, but I don't remember them being that painful. So it's very subjective. I would say, I would say maybe like here on your arm on the outside of your arm is probably the safest bet. Maybe the top of your forearm, maybe, um, I don't, I don't have anything on my legs, so I can't really tell you, but don't get anything on your torso because that will be pain. I know of a lot of people that have gotten their side tattoos as their first tattoo, which is a huge mistake. Um, because those people are the people that typically tend to never get tattooed again because they're like, wow, that fucking hurt. It's like, yeah, because you started on one of the most painful spots that you could go. Um, because sometimes you get tattoos that don't, you're like, wow, are you tattooing me? Um, but for the most part, it sucks no matter where you go. And as you get older, it hurts more. So get them while you're young. Actually, I, I shouldn't say that. That's really bad really bad uh, advice because you should think about what you're going to get before you get it. Um, but, but it does hurt more when you get older. Um, let's see. Christian Clark says, would you ever collab with a UFC fighter? I would, uh, I guess it depends on who and what they would, how they would want to collab. But uh, yeah, that'd be sick. I uh, I I don't know how that would work, but but yeah, sure. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Da -da 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 -da. Just reading through some of these questions. Andy Fowley says, can you be hired to film for people outside or can you, can you be hired for fit to film? Jesus, I can't read. Can you be hired to film for people out of Pennsylvania? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, depends on what it is. Depends on what the project is. If you, uh, are interested in having me do something like that, send me an email through my website and I would be glad to take a look and see what kind of project you're working on. I love that I'm seeing all of these que all these uh, comments after the fact of just people being like, "Wow, this this chat is really something else." I can't believe you would ask that. Why would you say that? But I'm not seeing what these questions are, so that's probably for my benefit. And uh, if I do something like this again, clearly I'm going to need some sort of moderator to to deal with that. Um, Mel says, what's your thoughts on scalp tattoos? Well, I don't have any scalp tattoos, so I cannot comment on them. I'm sure they would be very, very painful, though. Uh, Daniel England, any update on the docuseries? I think what you are referring to is the, the documentary for Scoring the End of the World. So earlier I mentioned that... Um, that I had nothing to do with the creation of that. So I was not in charge and I do not know. I don't have an answer. I wish that I did because I want that to come out just as much as everybody else, but I do not know. I'm sorry. Um... Mods are always a good idea. Yes, I'm finding this out now. I never anticipated doing a live stream, so I never even thought about it. And now that I'm, uh, now that I'm seeing this unfold in real life in real time, realizing how much of a pain in the ass that would be, or sorry, I'm realizing how much of a pain in the ass it is without it, even though I'm not seeing what you guys are seeing. Oh man, these are good questions. Um, 
Chelsea Clevenger, would you, Chelsea, are you, is your dad Craig? Because I have, one of my favorite authors is Craig Clevenger. And uh, that's funny that you have the same last name as him. Would you be against writing a, uh, a lyric for a tattoo? Um, no, I would not be against writing a lyric for a tattoo. Um, just got to find me at the right place at the right time and I'll do it. Um, Winter Lexington says, dude, whatever happened to soot? Okay, so I've talked about this a little bit in the past. So I, it, for people that don't know, I filmed a short film back in... I'm trying to think of what year that was. It was many years ago at this point. Um, and I had all the intention in the world of putting it out there. But when I finished it, when I got done editing it, when I got done doing all the sound for it, it was right around the same time as everything that was happening with the Black Lives Matter movement. And I felt like putting something out that wasn't kind of directed towards that felt like I was taking away from that. And I didn't want anybody to feel like, I don't know, like, like the stuff that's going on in the world isn't important or that I don't care about it. And so I felt like it would be silly for me to put something out that's like super personal when there's bigger things that are happening that are much more important of people's time and energy than what I'm doing. Um, so I felt wrong putting it out. And then, um, and then the longer that I didn't put it out, the more I was like, well, now I'm not really in like that same like league of, of filmmaking anymore. I feel like my skills are better. I feel like I'm better at what I'm doing. I feel like I have a better grasp on editing and, and, and making, you know, a film than I did before. And so then I didn't want to put something out that was not representative of, of, you know, what I, what I feel like I'm capable of as a first thing, which, you know, I guess you could say that for anything that you're doing creatively. Um, but then it just got so far beyond when I had, uh, originally said that I was, I was creating it that I was like, there's no way, there's no way I could put this out and be happy with people seeing it because there are so many things that I, I, I know that I'm better than when I'm doing or creating. And this is not representative of my work at all. And I don't want people to misinterpret this new thing coming out as me being like, here's, here's me because you know, now, now this was six, seven years ago or so. And I'm not anywhere near that at this point. So, um, so that's going to sit on a hard drive for another 10 years and then I'm going to put it out as like a, an archive, like here was the sh first short film I ever did. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, that's the answer to that. <laughs> Samantha Guerrero says, better yet, can we get merch that just says the word update, but in your handwriting? I, you know, I, would love to do something like that, but I feel like when it comes to merch, I want to, excuse me, Jesus. Um, I want to do something that is minimal and kind of representative of something that I really believe in as far as like an aesthetic and feel like writing out update is like silly and tongue in cheek. And I know that people would enjoy that and and uh want that as a merch piece but i just feel like for the sake of like me as a creative and wanting to and knowing and like putting i don't know what the word is i'm looking for putting a sort of like stamp of approval on putting something out without that stamp of approval of like here's this thing and i know that not everything i put out has to be serious and um has to have some crazy purpose because obviously I make shorts that are silly and stupid and don't have any any real meaning other than just to enjoy them for what they are. But uh, with merch, I feel like I don't want to step over that boundary just because I, I, I want it to be 
I don't know. I want it to be taken seriously and I want it to be taken like, like, a like some, some piece of clothing that like, we're all part of this thing. And we all, I, I, I wanted to talk about this in my last video actually. And it was, it just got so long that I was like, I can't, I can't put this in here. Um, but the gist is that I want to feel like I'm like, I have something that all of us can be a part of something that we all believe in something that is bigger than just us as people. Like to me, sure. The heart is a symbol for myself or a logo for myself, but I think that it's also much as much of that as it is representative of something that I've kind of created as, as far as a community goes with you guys and people that have stuck around for all these years with me, whether it comes to, or yeah, when it comes to like my writing, my uh, video stuff, my music, my, my personal endeavors, like people that bought candles when I was making candles, like Everything that you guys have all stood behind me on, I feel like is something that I, I, it, it's all encompassed in the heart and what that means to me. And it, it's almost like this, this kind of family that I feel like we've been able to come together and create over the years. And I, I, I want it to stay that way. And I feel like by, by making it silly or making something silly kind of takes away from the seriousness of like, I want everybody to feel everybody that has a piece to feel like they're a part of this thing and that we're all creatives. We're all important and we all support each other. We all lift each other up and we all can, you know, uh, support each other when, when we're doing whatever we're doing, because that's what you guys, well, because that's what you guys have all done for me. And I want, all of us to do it for you as well. And that's why, <laughs> but yeah. God, I want to hear my voice at the beginning of this and my voice now, because I can tell that my voice is starting to get really fatigued from talking. <laughs> and, and I feel like it's starting to get like, this is how my, my voice feels when I record a song like singing wise afterward jeez thank you guys for uh still sticking around I think I'm going to take a couple more questions and then, uh, and then call it because I'm my, like I said, my throat's getting really fatigued and, uh, I also have to pee really bad. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to do that so that my bladder doesn't burst. Um, a bass or a tenor, uh, Lilith. I don't know. Actually, I don't think I'm definitely not a bass. Um, but because I sing much higher than I do talk, which is weird because I, like, I, I feel like, I don't know. It's weird. Cause I, I, I can definitely sing pretty high. Like I can keep up with Chris for the most part and he can sing pretty high, but my talking voice is much lower than his. So it's, I, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, Gabrielle Gaspara, Gaspara says, why did you stop wearing piercings? Piercings. I don't know why I said it like that. Piercings. Um, I just felt like I was kind of growing out of them. I, I didn't feel like they were really representative of me anymore. Um, I, I don't know, just felt like one of the same thing with my hair. It was like, I'm just, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like me anymore. And I want, I want to change. And so that's why I, I stopped wearing them. Alice, Alyssa, I'm not even going to try to say your last name. Uh, do you like cats? Uh, I do like cats. Uh, I used to have a cat back in the day. I mean, I guess technically it wasn't, technically it wasn't my cat, but I had a cat. And uh, yeah. 
Zen says, would you like to perform cinematic again? I don't know if I would like to perform it again, but I would not be opposed to it. Um, cinematic is definitely not my favorite song to play live, but I think the crowd interaction from that song is up there with like another life and uh, voices. So I think that that's a, a really cool moment when we do play that song. L uh, Larwin Chaos. What's your thought on First Nations Native American art? Beadwork, paintings, drawing. One day I wouldn't mind beating your logo as a medallion for you. That would be awesome. Um, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't, I can't really say too much on it because I, I, I haven't like studied it or gone out of my way to really like dive into that world. Um, but from what I've seen, I think that dream catchers are really neat. Um, I, I think that the, the stylings of those things are really cool and really interesting. Um, but like I said, I haven't really like put time into like appreciating them for what they are and what they mean for the culture and what they represent. So, um, I would like to not feel like, uh, ignorant, I guess, if, if, uh, I don't know if that's like weird to have a piece like that and not understand what the meaning of it is. Um, but I, I, I don't want that to be the case. So, uh, maybe if you make something like that, you can kind of, uh, educate me a little bit on that. Daniel Santo Santos, will long hair be back? Probably not. I am so happy with my hair that I never want to grow it out again. Michelle Binder, if you could be the physical embodiment of one of your songs, which would you be? I wish I would have read this question before I actually read it out loud because now I have to answer it and I don't know the answer. Oh, man. Physical embodiment of one of your songs. How about you tell me? Um, I would like to choose a song that feels very chaotic and very stubborn and very um and very <laughs> i don't know favorite tv show i uh charlotte motionless says what is your favorite tv show my favorite tv show is uh of all time uh probably dark it's a german show that is on netflix and best show i've ever seen hands down um breaking bad is up there mr robot is up there those are probably my top three hmm Oh man, so many questions coming now that people know that I, I have to leave. Uh, is there any chance that Fatal will be on the set list for next tour? Draven asks. Um, I, I'm not sure. We're still in the process of figuring out what our set list is going to be. I'm not going to say no, because there's a, always you know a certain percentage that a song is going to make it. But, uh, but I would say it's not likely, but who knows, you know, there's, there's times where a couple shows or four or five shows out of a tour will throw just random songs in just to mix it up. So maybe it'll be, uh, it'll be one of those types of situations. Uh, Zen says again, thank you, Zen. Since you're going to call it soon, thank you so much for doing this. You really made my day and everyone else's have a good, relaxing night after this. Thank you, Zen. I appreciate that. And I am going to eat a fabulous dinner, I think, of uh, some sort of variety. I don't know what it is yet, but... Will they come back to Mexico again? Yes, we will at some point. I'm sure. We will. 
Um, okay, I think that I need to leave because I don't have a catheter. That would be really helpful right now because then I could just pee down a tube into my, you know what? <laughs> you don't need to know this. Um, so I'm going to call it. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. As always, I can't believe we spent almost three hours doing this. Thank you, Casper. Appreciate you. Um, I maybe I'll do something like this again another time because this was sick and I can't believe that I had like 800 people watching the whole time. Um, so thank you guys again for, uh, for everything. Appreciate you guys. Have a good rest of your night or morning or wherever you're watching from and, uh, stay happy, stay healthy. I love you all. And I will see you all, uh, next time, next video, next, uh, next tour. See you at some point. Bye guys.